we examine the Hundred Years' War between England and France. With Europe reeling from the results of the Black Plague, dealing with the roots of the Reformation and church decay, the failure of the Crusades, new goods flooding in daily from the European markets that came from China and the Silk Roads, the crumbling of Byzantium, the birth of guilds and the middle class, the decrease of feudalism, and the rise of large nation-states like England and France, Europe was heading into a brand new era. We have discussed the rivalry between England and France over the land holdings and the crown holder. The repeated marrying of French royalty to English kings had left England with a lot of property in France. The French king spent a lot of time and treasure in finding ways to remove England's grip on the fiefs in France, either through wars or other means. As we've seen, they often found ways to cause problems in the English royal houses, and this history goes back to William the Conqueror in 1066. At this point in French and English history, Edward III had taken the throne. After his French mother Isabel and her lover Roger Mortimer had ousted his father Edward II for his role in one of in Mount of Infinite Barons Wars that were taking place despite the signing of the Magna Carta 200 years before. Edward was part of the Plantagenet family, and France was still being ruled by the Capetians, of which his mother Isabel was a member, as she was daughter of Philip IV or Philip the Fair. Her three brothers all became king, as well as one of their babies, and all died. The Tour de Nestle scandal had left doubts about the other kids, and the French had passed a Salic law which forbid women to rule, so the next in line would be Isabel's son, Edward III, who would be king of England and France. The French refused to cede an English king and instead settled on the king's cousin in the house of Valois, who had become Philippe VI. They would begin taking English lands away immediately. Edward III jumped back in the crown race, and the two countries would go to war for 1337 to 1453 in what was known as the Hundred Years' War. England had the upper hand at the beginning. England had brought the longbow to the war. It was six feet long and could shoot three arrows by the time the French could load a crossbow. England won the original battles at Treacy, Agincourt, and Poitiers, because the English were also aided by some new weapons of war like the cannon, which was loaded with new metalworks, shot, and Chinese gunpowder. All this would create a new field of military strategy of artillery planning. Castle walls were about to become irrelevant. The English demoralized the French with this arms race, and then the French brought in their new weapon, Joan of Arc, who you hear about in the next video. With Joan of Arc dead, the French still managed to turn the tide by adapting British cannons. Five generations of kings would fight the Hundred Years' War. Britain would lose its French territory, and France would develop its own national identity. New weapons and standing armies would replace volunteer knights in war from now on. England would fall into the War of the Roses while France developed a structured absolute monarchy.